saying it's a false one, but I think there are a lot of anatomical inaccuracies about it. For example, the head is far too inflated. It looks like it's been pumped up with a bicycle pump. <laughs> I think the shape of the beak is quite incorrect as well. Um, and we'll, I'll show you the reason for that later. Yeah. Also, if we look around here at the tail, you'll see it's halfway up the back, which also seems to me to be the wrong position for the bird's tail. But uh, it's and also, as you will see later, I think it's far too fat. But how do we know all those things? Well, I obviously... Have you seen a photograph of the original? I wish I had. It would yeah. have saved me all this trouble. Yes. <laughs> no, um, what I've done is to look in detail at the anatomical evidence that is available. And from that, try and find ways of finding out how much a living dodo weighed. Just an average size one. So, not the biggest one or yes. not the smallest one, but the one in the middle. Okay, you are not interested in sources from the 16th and 17th century, only in the biological or ontological logics. Well, obviously I looked at those, but there yes. are a great deal of inconsistencies. That's Some true. people are saying dodos were quite fat, others yep. are saying quite thin. On the basis of that, people have suggested that there was a seasonal fat cycle, yeah. that during part of the year the dodo was fat and the dodo was thin. So what I did initially was to get all the copies of illustrations that I could, and I arranged them in order of time. And the pattern that came out was that all the early dodo pictures before 1626 appeared to show thin birds or moderately fat birds, but whereas all the ones after 1626 showed these really great hulking fat things. Yeah. Here there is a plaster of the original Oxford uh, dodo head. That's right, yes. and, and you can see... So, if you compare it with this reconstruction copy... You can see that it's... and the model is anatomically quite incorrect. In most birds, the skin on the head follows very closely the shape of the cranium. There must have been an, an awful lot of flesh added on here to get this shape. And as you can see from the cast of the head, it couldn't have been that shape. You'll also notice that the, the uh, beak is longer, the beak is longer yeah. and straighter. Yeah. What is lost from the Oxford head is this um, keratin cap, this keratin sheath. Yeah. Um, but if you look again at the bone, you will see that it's very richly supplied with blood vessels, so that we know that a thick layer of keratin could grow there. But where's the hook? There's no hook on the well, it's, Oxford. This, is, this has fallen off. But it's fallen. And you can, if you How look do very you know that it's fallen off? I've looked at the specimen. Yeah. And uh, if me you look, too. if you look very close, you can see where it has just um, it's just fallen off. It's just come away, and it certainly shouldn't be as thin as the specimen shows in Oxford. It's just been lost. But you decided a few years ago, I think, to make a new specimen. Yes, we're yeah. um, we're opening a new exhibition on nature conservation yeah. here next year, yeah. in '92, and we wanted to have something special to put on display, and so we decided to do a new reconstruction of the dodo, and. In order to get all the bits in between the head and the foot, yeah. what I did was to measure as many bones as I could find so that I could get average measurements for all the bones and therefore we could reconstruct an average sized skeleton. But why you were so interested in, uh, in the dodo for yourself? Well, I wasn't interested in it myself at all. No? I was just doing it they say to you, you had for to this make... exhibition. We wanted it to... was an order. It was, make, it was an order. It was make an order. a new dodo. Make a yes? dodo, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want to end up with something like this. I wanted to look at it from the very basics and see if anything else would come out. And here is your first copy of the new dodo. That's right. You're, you, what I you, did... You did it by yourself? Uh, yes, I did from this clay. myself. This is plasticine. It's plasticine, yes. Um, I made a skeleton out of wire based on the average measurements. And this is one-fifth of the, uh, of the fully adult size. And then I added on plasticine muscles and other body tissues and a moderate amount of fat and ended up with this. Well, the next thing I did, in fact, wasn't mm. concerning with the actual internal structure of the bones. It was to look at the overall sizes of bones. Now, as we know, the dodo is a giant pigeon. And the important thing about... You know that for sure? Yes. Oh. There's a lot of research going on in Amsterdam to prove that. Yes. But you already should. Well, I think there is a, the body of evidence is that there is a pigeon, a giant pigeon. Okay. As, and if anybody comes up with new evidence, we'll have to start all over again. It's the echte geleerde. It's real man of science. Yes, go on. Yeah. And so what we did, or what I did, was to look at how the leg bones change in size given the changing weight of different si types of pigeons. So we went from the very smallest pigeons, like the diamond dove from Australia, up to the largest living pigeon, which is the crown pigeon of New Guinea. 
and look at how the leg bones change in size with changing body weight. And I also did this for another family of birds, the parrots, because the largest member of the parrot family is, like the largest member of the pigeon family, flightless. And what I did from that was use the information I had on how, this, how the leg bones change with body size to calculate a weight for the flightless parrot. And it was exactly what you'd expect from the data in the literature. So I did the same with the dodo. And this again confirms a body weight of about 13 kilograms. So it confirms the model weight. As you can see from the cross section of the bones, they are in fact very thin. And I was in a very good position to um, use some data that uh, Professor McNeil Alexander of Leeds University had collected in East Africa. And he was looking at the strengths of the leg bones of birds which run around a lot on the ground, like the ostrich and the guinea fowl and the bustard. And I was then able to calculate a strength for all the leg bones of the dodo. And these strengths, given the slimline version, if you like, these strengths fell within the range of these other running birds. But of course, if the dodo weighed twice as much, they wouldn't, and that would say the dodo couldn't actually run around very fast. But very fortunately, um, uh, a Dutchman was shipwrecked on Mauritius, on a small island off Mauritius in 1662, and he described the dodo as, um, although it had very small wings or winglets, it could run around very fast. Uh, you use now one source that shoots you. And but that's very dangerous in science, you know. It is, but yes. there again, nobody else bothered to describe the behavior yeah. of the dodo. But you, you never use his, uh, sources from the past, and now it shoots you. You well, say, yes, saying, there is one Dutch man. Well, I'm just saying that that is the only observation that we have, because nobody described the, yeah, the but behavior. Uh, but I'm, I'm not saying that that's the final proof. It's not, okay. this is not the, the final clinching piece. It's yeah. lots of things fitting in together, together, which confirmed. So on the basis of the average skeletal measurements, yeah. and also the evidence that we know from the Oxford head and the London foot, we produced a life-size version. But this is a naked one. Of the naked one. This is the naked one. And that's just to give you an idea of the anatomy of the bird and how we've fitted the muscles onto the skeleton that you can see over there. It's a dodo as a sport car. Well, as I say, um, a Dutchman described them as running around very fast, yeah. so this could run around very yeah. fast. And so we've, we've covered this in feathers, and yeah. you end up... And show me the new one. Final <laughs> Brand new, slimline dodo. It's your, uh, the copyright is yours? The National Museums of Scotland. Uh, it's not your copyright.